Here I would like to show you how to apply the mesh current analysis to a circuit that we have analyzed already previously. But this time the initial conditions, the initial current in the inductor and the initial voltage in the capacitor are not zero. So applying step one of the mesh current analysis, we draw the circuit with voltage sources only. That means that we transfer the initial conditions into voltage sources as we have seen previously in the Laplace transformation section. In step number two, we are choosing the resistor as the connection between the two nodes that we are interested in. We could have as well have chosen the connection the left hand side around through the voltage source here, or we could have chosen the connection on the right hand side around, but now we have chosen the characteristic tree, the determining tree for that circuit to be the resistor. That automatically leaves us with the two current loops IA and IB, which are linking the rest of the circuit to the resistor, where IA is circling in the left loop and IB is circling in the right loop. Now in the third step of the mesh current analysis, we put all of the sources on one hand side of the equation. And if we see how the current IA is meeting the voltage sources flowing through here, it's meeting the V source in a negative way. So we can put it in a positive way over to the right hand side of the equation. And the same holds for the initial current in the inductor, which is the voltage L times the initial current of that inductor. Furthermore, the impedances we are meeting, IA is flowing through the impedance SL of the inductor, and then we have IA minus IB flowing through the resistor. And that was all for the loop A. The same for loop B, we meet the impedance of the capacitor as one over SC, and we meet the initial voltage of the capacitor now with the other sign, so that is on the right hand side of the equation, actually with the minus sign. So that is minus Vc at the time zero, divided by the complex frequency S. And finally, Ib minus Ia is flowing through the resistor in our determining tree. That closes the current loop Ib and we are ready to set up those equations. So the impedances multiplied with the respective currents that we met in the last step are going on the left-hand side of the equation. And we put all the voltage sources that we met in a negative way on the right-hand side of the equation. And the ones that we met with the positive sign, as in this case here, show up with a negative sign on the right-hand side of the equation and again, the impedances times the relevant current, also for the loop B, are on the left-hand side of the equation. Now we can rewrite those equations into a matrix form. And finally, applying Kramer's rule helps us to determine the currents by calculating the determinants of the relevant matrices both for the current A and for the loop current B. Now it's your time to practice those two analysis methods. So here's the node voltage analysis. What are the equations in the S domain for the node voltages here? Then solve those equations for the voltage V2, which is the output of that circuit. And finally, enter an operational amplifier here on the point A to decouple the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the circuit and see how the circuit operation changed now. And finally, design the circuit for some specific frequencies required here. 
and also an exercise for the mesh current analyzers, assuming that all the initial conditions in the circuit are zero. So the voltages across C1 and C2 are zero to start with. What are the current equations in the S domain? And then with the help of the mesh current analyzers, determine the relationship of the input voltage V1 and the output voltage V2 in the S domain.